So now that you know about factorials, it's time to talk about permutations. And to talk about permutations, we're going to need five friends. So these five friends walk into class and there are five desks and chairs. So I wonder how these five people are going to sit at these five desks. Well, they could sit alphabetically, like that, but they could also sit randomly, like that. Now, they could sit in many, many different ways, so the obvious question is, how many ways can they arrange themselves? Now, this word permutations, what does it mean? Well, this is a particular permutation. That's one permutation of them sitting down. That's another permutation right there. So, how many ways can they arrange themselves? Another way to say that is, how many permutations are there? But we're going to stick with how many ways can they arrange themselves. Now, to do this, we can easily use the boxes that I've already drawn, or these identical boxes down here. So, the number of permutations is equal to... Now, let's think about this. Let's just consider the first desk for a moment. Now, how many different students could sit at the first desk if they just sat one at a time? Five different people, right? Because A could go there, or B could go there, or C could go there, or D could go there, or E could go there. So, the number of people that could sit at the first desk is five. Now, once that first person sits down, how many people are left still standing up? There's still four people left standing up, which means that there are four different people that could then choose to sit in the second desk. And now that two people are sitting down, there are three people left. So three people can go into that third one. And now that three people are sitting down, there are only two people left standing. So we choose between the two of them. And then the last person standing up, they sit in that last desk. All right. And now five times four times three times two times one is going to be our answer to the number of permutations of our five friends sitting at these five desks. That's 120. And you should be looking at those five boxes, five times four times three times two times one, and you should realize that that is also equal to five factorial. And we're talking about permutations. We talked about factorials in the last video, and this is the connection right here. A little bit of theory here, the number of permutations of n objects is n factorial. If we had 10 people trying to sit in 10 desks, it would be 10 factorial. If we had 100 people trying to sit in 100 desks, it would be 100 factorial. Let's do a couple more examples, just really quick. How many ways can six different books be arranged on a shelf? It's just books instead of people here. There are six different books being put in six different spots, and it's going to be six times five times four times three times two times one. You're probably looking at these box saying, Mr. Sprenz is a bit silly, why is he doing all these boxes? The boxes are going to get really useful later on when these questions get more complicated. But the equivalent version of this is just six factorial, which is 720. All right, and this is where we can start to see where these boxes might be useful. How many four-digit numbers can be transformed using the digits 1, 2, 3, and 4 if they cannot be repeated? All right, so let's do part A first. They cannot be repeated. So in the first box, I can put anything I want. So that means there's four different numbers that I can put there, 1, 2, 3, or 4. Once I've put that one there, let's say I put the number 2 there, right? I can only put 1, 3, or 4 in the next box. So it is 3. If I've put the number 2 and then the number 1, there's only two numbers left that I can put there. And then finally, there's only one number left. This is identical to the other examples. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 4 factorial, which is equal to 24. Part B, bit of a trick here. You'll notice that I've written number of ways this time, not number of permutations, because this one is not a permutations question, because they can be repeated. Right, so what does that mean? Well, in our first box, I'm allowed to put the number 1, 2, 3, or 4. So I have four options for what I put into that first box. Um, what can I put in the second box? Well, there's no limit here because I'm allowed to repeat them. So I could write the number um, 1, 1, 1, 1 if I wanted to. I could write the number 1, 1, 2, 1 if I wanted to. I'm, I can repeat these as often as I like. It's not like the question where there's people and desks. This is a different question. So, I can put whatever I like here. There's four options to put there. I can put one, two, three, or four in there. What can I put in there? Again, there's four options here. I can put one, two, three, or four. So, I can put four there. I can put four there. So, four times four times four times four. 
That's the same as 4 to the power of 4, which I think is 256. You can see that when we're not allowed to repeat things, we're not going to have very many numbers. When we are allowed to repeat things, we're going to have more numbers. Now, remember our friends from the start of the video? Let's bring them into a new situation. All right, we've actually got seven friends this time, and they walk into a room, but there's a problem. There are only four desks. So the other three are going to sit on the floor, and four people are going to be able to sit in these desks. How many ways can this thing happen? How many ways can we take those seven people and put them into four desks and put another three on the floor there? You can see me setting this up again the same way. There are four desks that we've got here, and we're going to put those people into those desks. Now, how many people or how many options are there for putting a person into that first desk? Well, there's seven people and all of them are allowed to sit on that desk. So there are seven people that I can put on that first desk, right? But once I've put one person there, let's say I put person D there, right? There are six people left that could go in that second desk. So there's six people that can go there. And let's say that I put person B there. It doesn't matter who I put there, but once two people have been put into the first two desks, I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five people left to put here. And uh, let's say I put C there, and now I've got four people left that I can sit on the last desk, and that's four. Seven times six times five times four. That is equal to 840. Now, this is a nice, neat little pattern here. It's kind of like a factorial, because it's seven times six times five times four but then it gets cut off at the end. And in fact, this kind of cut off at the end factorial is so useful that we've got a way of denoting it. We write it as 7P4, a big seven up the top, a normal sized P and a subscript four. Now, what does this 7P4 mean? Taking this specific example, we can say that 7P4 means the number of permutations of seven objects taken four at a time. The number of ways of arranging seven objects in a group of four. Now, of course, we can move away from the specific, make it more general. NPR means the number of permutations of N objects taken R at a time. Doesn't matter how many, maybe there were 20 people and five desks, that would mean 20 P5. Now, We've been talking about this being some sort of cutoff factorial. We can actually do this cutoff factorial as a neat little formula. This is actually equal to 7 factorial, which is 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, divided by 3 factorial. Now, let me show you exactly why that is equal to 7 factorial over 3 factorial because 7 factorial is, and 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. And now we can get to dividing top and bottom by 1 and 1 and 2 and 2 and 3 and 3, and you can see that 7 factorial over 3 factorial is indeed equal to 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. Now, that's a pretty neat way of working. There is a small issue, though, because when I look at the question, I see the number 7, and I see the number 4. Where did this 3 come from? Okay, it's not really in the question, but hopefully you can see where it's coming from. 3 factorial is equal to 7 minus 4. The number of objects we have and the number of things or the size of the group that we're arranging it into. We can take this from the specific question that we're doing and take it to the much more general case down here. NPR is equal to N factorial over N minus R factorial. The number of ways of arranging N things into groups of size R is equal to N factorial over N minus R factorial. All right, let's do another example that's very similar, but we'll just kind of use the formula. So two quick examples here. Using the letters A, B, C, D and E without repetition, how many different two-letter arrangements are there? So the number of arrangements here, um, we're only doing arrangements of two, right? So box example here, we would put either A, B, C, D or E in the first box, which is five. We would put uh, the other four, one of the other four in the other box. So my answer is 20. All right, 
we can do this a different way. We can say it's equal to, there are five objects, let's permute that, five permute two. All right, how does that go into our formula? Five factorial over five minus two factorial, which is equal to five times four times three times two times one over um, three times two times one. Boop, 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 boop. Five times four equals 20. It's hopefully at this point you're looking at that and looking at that and thinking this is way easy. No, sorry, this is way easier than that. Luckily, your calculator has a permute button on it and you can just press it. 5P2, answer. So you can get from this step here to this step here in a single shot if you use your calculator. Six runners compete in a race. In how many ways can the gold, silver and bronze medals be awarded? So we've got six people and we've got a group of three that we need to choose. So gold followed by silver followed by bronze. Six people could get gold, five here and four here. But of course, we can write this as six permute three, which can be written as six factorial over six minus three factorial, which we, you will find is equal to six times five times four. But again, you can type six P3 into your calculator, get an answer. And our answer here is 120. All right, we have covered quite a bit of ground here when it comes to permutations. It's a very new idea to us, but if you move through it pretty steadily and try to keep the idea of these boxes in your mind, they are very useful, but then start incorporating this formula, it's not going to be too bad. Good luck.